I would hope that everybody understands by now that there are certain things that are true in life. And one of those things that are absolutely unequivocally true is that not everybody is going to agree with you all the time. If you are that insecure and that overly sensitive that you have to have somebody agree with you every single time, then the reality is, is you need to either check yourself or you need to nut up and grow the hell up. Because criticism, critique, negativity are part of the territory when it comes to human life. Personal life, business life, you name it. It's out there. Nobody is going to agree with you on every single thing. Nor is that healthy. Nor is that good. Like, to me, that type of cult-like behavior and seeking that out and trying to isolate yourself and only absorbing the positives doesn't help you be better, doesn't help you grow, doesn't help you improve, doesn't help you reach your true potential. Because if you think you're doing everything perfectly well, then you will eventually become stagnant. You won't grow. You won't get better. That's just a fact. It's not even an opinion. That's a fact. And certainly I know in interacting with people on social media over the years and the internet and YouTube and everything else, you got a lot of people that are incredibly insecure with who they are and their shortcomings. You have a lot of people that can't handle criticism. And, and not just like they don't handle it well, like they just can't handle it at all. Like the little bit of it will get them to fly off the handle, which certainly indicates like deeper seated issues and certainly indicates that you just need to grow the hell up a little bit. You could say that's me not being sensitive enough to it, but you know, like how do you expect to be truly successful in life if you can't handle some obstacles and some reluctance and some objections? Like it's not going to work. You can either figure out how to ignore it or embrace it or figure out how to combat it and respond to it. Those can all be potentially helpful coping mechanisms. You can learn to just absorb it, you know, like I said, the whole ignore thing. It doesn't mean you truly ignore it, but more like you just kind of absorb it and you say, yeah, you know what? They're right and that's okay. They don't have to like it. Sometimes when I look at some, some of my videos over the years, when I see those videos that have like 98, 99, close to 100% like rate, to me, I consider those poor videos. Even if the subject matter was good and even if it happened to be delivered well. Because I didn't evoke other reactions. I didn't evoke the types of opinions from across the spectrum that I think truly helped foster a more thorough and healthy discussion and help me learn things and grow and improve and so forth. But the one thing you should never do is sit there and run away from it and let it like so personally impact you and affect you. And that especially holds true if you were a chief brand officer for a major North American wrestling company. You can't sit there and talk about inclusion. If you give us 50 bucks and you're female, then it's inclusion. Otherwise, it doesn't count. You can't sit there and say, we want to hear from you. As long as you give us 50 bucks and you're female. You can't sit there and say that we want to hear your thoughts and we want to hear your perspectives as long as you're female and you pay 50 bucks for our stupid ass AEW heels crap. And then turn around once you roll out the program, which is a farce at a time where millions of people are unemployed and you're specifically trying to target a small segment of your overall fan base. You're sitting there and saying, yeah, you matter as long as you pony up the freaking dough. Then when those fans respond in kind as they should and talk about what a crap show of an idea it is and how stupid it is, and they talk about the flaws with it, and they give you legit criticisms and critiques of it, the way to not respond 
is to sit there and act and lash back out like a petulant brat is not to sit there and try to call other people out in the way that you do and certainly the way to not do that when you are a chief brand officer of a major North American wrestling company is sit there and turn up the heat in the kitchen but then realize you can't handle it because you're not talented enough and you're not good enough and that is clear because sister nepotism only gets you but so far in this damn world although for her it's gotten her quite a ways clearly you don't sit there as a chief brand officer and shut down your social media account because of the shit storm that you and large part created the hell is wrong with you This is a perfect example. A perfect example. And in some ways epitomizes some of the long-term concerns I have with AEW, specifically with their leadership at the executive vice president level. Because this is something that is an epidemic throughout that population. The Bucks can't handle critique or criticism at all. Kenny Omega, similar type of story. Not as bad, but not great. We all know Cody Rhodes has a history of sitting there and trying to deny things that are actually true, lying, and then trying to get everybody to mob against those that oppose him. And he has done that to me. He's done it to others, too. Like, he's full of it, and everybody knows it. But yet, again, another insecure piece of crap. So it shouldn't be a surprise when his wife is acting in the same type of manner. Period. Period. And you can't have that. You guys aren't on the indie scene now, where you're drawing the same four to 500 people all the time, and it's going to be goodwill and vibes and positivity all the time. As your platform has expanded, your scope and your audience has grown, and you are trying to be a major player on the national and international stage, one thing you have to be able to better do is remove emotion from the situation. Because if you can't do that, you are going to be set up for a disaster. And you can see it coming. How are you ever going to get better if every time somebody throws a critique or a criticism at you, you respond in a petulant, bratty, whiny, immature, insecure type of way? You're not high schoolers anymore. You are grown-ups. Should rename your damn wrestling company NFL, which is going to be not for long if you continue to act like this. Grow up, nut up, and get the hell over yourselves a little bit. Like, y'all make decent livings. If I could sit here and come with my crappy webcam, my crappy audio, and my crappy three-bedroom house and talk about wrestling and deal with the hate that I get and all the other crap that I get and the negativity that I get, that I spew, and all of that other stuff, then you guys who make infinitely more than me at the present time should be able to do so in time. You should be able to deal with it. You should be able to at least ignore it or at least learn how to handle it like professionals. And especially when you're talking about Brandy Rhodes. This is yet another example of if you were trying to find, fight the label of you benefiting because of who you're sleeping with and who you're married to, and you're saying it's not nepotism, well, then you need to figure out a way to act better than this. You're already not a good wrestling talent, and clearly when it comes to chief brand officer, if this was your brainchild, if this was your own idea, this was an abortion and a disaster of one. It doesn't mean it has to be the end of you by any means, but that means that you buck up and you learn from it and acknowledge a damn mistake. What you don't do is sit there and talk down to people and crap all over them for your shitty idea. You don't sit there and deactivate your social media because you're a wuss that can't handle a little bit of freaking criticism. Grown-ass woman living in a nice house, got a decent salary, college degree and everything else, and now all of a sudden, people responding in part because of the way that you poorly handled yourself and positioned something in relation to the brand that you were supposed to be overseeing. You need to get a grip and you need to get a clue. 
or Cody needs to check your ass and stop letting you run amok. Because it is this type of nepotistic crap, it is this type of garbage that can help bring down a brand. Like even when the AEW sheep are blasting you for it, when they don't want to blast you for anything, that means you have crossed a line, crossed a boundary, where they felt safe enough to criticize you for it. And I know that's part of the problem, is you don't have enough people that are willing to step up and criticize you guys enough in order to help expose some of the problems so that way you can grow, get better, and improve. And that deals with them as fans and their own insecurities and their own problems trying to justify why they watch something. Or more importantly, the decrease in standards that seem to have become an epidemic throughout professional wrestling. But you wonder why people might be upset. Especially the female fans. Yeah, we want to include you, but you got to fork over 50 bucks first. And not on a monthly cadence. We want it all up front, bitches. Like, what the hell message does that send? You want to make the women of AEW feel more included. You want to make the fans that are female of AEW. And by the way, there are male fans that want the women to do well too and want to be featured well. You want to know how you do that? You don't sit there and try out basically a $50 a year form for your garbage. And then sit there and only have your women booked on the damn show on Wednesday night for like a minute and a half or two. Don't need to charge female fans 50 bucks for a stupid forum to make the women feel better and make them feel more included. The way you make them feel more included, the way you make them feel more equal, is you give them opportunities. You actually bother to develop some characters with some of your female talents. You actually try to book them in a semi-serious way. You don't sit there and throw them out there in the same random 10 or 15 minute matches all the time. You do things that actually make them matter. That makes people realize that they are important to your brand too. And even then, not every female fan likes the women wrestlers. There are plenty that aren't watching for the girls, they're watching for the guy. And you certainly have some guys that don't give a bunch of crap about the guy, they only want to see the ladies. Like what a dumb message. That we want to include you, well you gotta pay in order to be included. And if that ain't, if that ain't America, I don't know what the hell it is. You count and you're included as long as you got the money for it. Otherwise, piss off. Piss off. That's basically it. But you know you got problems when your chief brand officer is so inept at being able to deal with the hornet's nest that, frankly, they kicked up, they started, and they created that they got to get rid of their social media account, even if it's for a short period of time. Like, how stupid do you have to be? If the tweets really bother you that much, there is this function that's called, don't look at your notifications, bitch! There's the... Oh my God, life will go on if I don't log into social media for a few hours. So let me just not do that. Have people are stupid now. Bad enough if you go out in public, everybody's got their damn faces so buried in their phones or their laptops, they can't even now as the person that's breathing socially distance away from them, of course. Uh, you're right. Does it bother you that bad? Are we that consumed by technology? Are we that consumed by the need for acceptance that you got to log in all the time and the first time that you see anybody that dare say anything contrary or different, you got to run away and hide like a little punk ass? That's a punk ass move. Male, female, don't matter. Punk ass is a punk ass. And it's the type of move you would expect from somebody that's been able to coast by for years because of how they look, and now, especially, because of who they're married to. A chief brand officer should actually be a good representation of the brand. Like, Stephanie McMahon is many things, and there are a lot of things I don't like about her. But I certainly would say she is a much better public face for her brand than Brandy Rhodes is for AEW. And if you can't agree with that, then you've got some real problems your damn self. So in this case, and only in this case, Brandy, Think about all of the crap that Stephanie's probably had tweeted about her over the years and at her over the years. A lot of it deserved. And figure out if you want to be like her, then actually learn to be like her a little bit.
coward. 